gentlemen. I want you to repeat after me just how I do it. Ready? Your turn. Hello and welcome to this, the first podcast for children in care in Hampshire. I am your host and my name is Moira Smith. We've got a great show planned for you today with three main items. One, your voice, the voice of young people in care across Hampshire. Number two, your chance to meet with the Corporate Parenting Board. Number three, your chance to hear a fantastic song written by some young people earlier this year. We're hoping that this will be the first of many podcasts and we want to hear from you. We want you to contribute your ideas. What would you like us to talk about? We also want to hear your voice. There's going to be a regular feature for you to tell us what you're getting up to. But most of all, most of all, we want your songs. We want your poetry. We want your stories. Send them my way and we will get them on to the show because we need to have a bit of diversity on this show and you are the person who can offer it. The email address for the show is participation at hants.gov.uk that's participation at hants h-a-n-t-s dot gov g-o-v dot uk big thanks to charlie puth of the nts for that cracker of a song which is of course betty boo and now before we go any further, we're going straight to breaking news. And on breaking news today, we have got an amazing new lockdown competition for you. The competition is called We've Got Talent. All you have to do is to submit a one minute video of the work that you have done. There are four categories for prizes. That is performance, so sing a song, do a dance, tell a story. Variety, let's see some of your magic skills or your juggling or your pets, what your pets can do. Thirdly, let's see what baking you're doing and let's see how others enjoy the baking you have done. And number four, let's see what visual arts you have created so that could be a painting a piece of sculpture a photograph something visual the competition is open to children under eight children under 12 children under 16 and young people over 16 so get cracking and submit your one minute videos you have got until pretty much the end of May to get it done. That is tons of time, if I'm not mistaken. Speak to your worker about the rules and how to get involved. They've got all the details that you will need. Good luck to all of you. That's a pretty cool competition and there are some token prizes as well, so do get involved. Good fun. And now for a really cool part of the show where we hear your voice. This part of the show is called Minutes Make Ours and it's where we invite you to submit a minute of your day or a minute of your thoughts. As this is taking place during lockdown, we have asked for you to tell us what you've been doing to cope with lockdown. And it's been a great response, really has. Look forward to um, sharing this with you and I look forward to many more of these minutes make ours sections it's just so much fun to put together and i hope that you enjoy it as much as i did so take it away young people of hampshire the need to stay positive during this time of lockdown is uh listen to my music a really big passion of music i've been listening to that 
exploring new artists, music that I don't really listen to that I've got an ear to and I sort of enjoy doing that because it's kept me feeling good about myself and music is really good for mental health as well. Uh, also, I've been playing basketball, I love my sports, um, but I can't really get out and play as much, which uh, does my head in, but I mean, I try and do as much as I can, go for a run, just anything really, watch TV, YouTube, anything like that. All I just want to say for people out there who want to stay positive, do things that you enjoy doing, okay? That's what you need to do, okay? And stay positive. If you're down, talk to someone, okay? There's people around who love you, and yeah, uh, that's what I've been up to. So here are a few things that I've been doing to keep me sane, as it were. So, number one, studying. Studied the three sciences at college, so it's important that I kept up with my studies, um, as it is imperative to maintain the knowledge. So keep up with your work, because it can be quite good fun. Number two, exercise. I've been going for one session of walking every day, which has been very th therapeutic change of scene is very helpful. Number three, I keep up with my online classes of martial arts. I also post techniques to help other practitioners in quarantine as I have recently become a Krav Maga ambassador for the UK. This is very good for my mental health and physical health. So these are just a few things that I've been doing, uh, doing during this period and uh, I hope you've taken some inspiration. Thanks a bunch. In quarantine I've been watching a murder she wrote I've been on a couple of 5k runs, I live in a town, I live with friends, and I'm 18. I'm a care leaver, and I live in London. I spend most of my time making TikTok videos on like Pakistani songs, dancing, or memes. Also, I have started my YouTube channel with my boyfriend, where we do some challenges. We have a lot more ideas. I start learning new things such as baking. So I did make a cake which did not come properly. So let's hope next time it will come out good. Also I start learning cooking where I make Pakistani food. Also start making different type of food like African and British. Just trying to learn new skills. I have started workout to stay fit. I go out daily for a walk to get fresh air and in evening i watch some comedy movies and some pakistani dramas not let myself bored that's all i do that's how i spend my day thank you for listening being in isolation is really hard especially as a teenager or a young person because that's all you want to do is go see your friends i know that feeling because i've been stuck indoors for two weeks and I wasn't allowed outside. I wasn't allowed to be around my family because I work in a hospital run nursery. So I'm at risk of giving them a virus. So I've had to protect myself and it was difficult because that's, they mean the world to me and I'd rather spend my time with them. Um, but it's also been nice to have the time on my own because I've brought up some feelings that I wouldn't have thought because I'm always busy at work so it's actually made me a better person because I finally realised that I need counselling and that has made me realise that sometimes it's nice to have your time on your own. Hello, I am a care leaver. I live in a big town and the way I'm coping with lockdown is by listening to audiobooks, going for walks, watching a bit of YouTube, thinking about things. So yes, I'm doing quite a fair bit to keep myself entertained. I'm particularly enjoying the audiobooks. Uh, to be fair, they're better than I realised. Thank you for listening. Hello, um, I'm 19 years old and I live in a house share. The things that I've been doing to keep myself positive and busy um, include being creative mostly. I do a lot of painting and drawing. I really love music, so I've been playing my guitar. Um, I've been keeping in contact with friends and family, video calls. Um, my advice to anyone who is wanting to remain positive and busy during the lockdown would be to do something that you love and enjoy doing every day. So whether it be reading, going for a run or drawing, watching TV, listening to music and um, to get yourself into a routine so you're not sort of stuck in a rut where you're doing nothing all day. Yo, well, go on. 
So this is what I'm doing on lockdown. Laying in bed, watching Netflix. At the moment I'm watching it. <laughs> what a beautiful day it is. Swimming pool. Trampoline over there. Um, literally eating. Playing Xbox. Doing washing. And in the office. I'm okay, I live in London to keep positive while it's in the lockdown. Try to go every day for being healthy and safe from the virus, which is very important. Just keep yourself busy and be positive. So I do exercise every day to keep myself busy at the same time. Like, for example, I go for jogging and I do some push up, some squat, I read some books, and yeah, I watch TV. I'm like doing just very interesting stuff basically like doing everything to keep yourself busy you know? like sometimes you could just write some stories and doing other things and I think it's gonna help us if we if we're doing anything we're not gonna get bored so quick and uh, nothing help us to get over this situation very soon and I pray God this fire is not gonna last longer and hopefully we will be able to go out and enjoy our safe peace thank you I am 17 years of age, I live with my foster carers and during quarantine I have been exploring um, my photo shoots as I'm taking A-levels so I've been handing in my work regularly, exploring um, different ways I can revise and get my education for my future. Um, separate to this I have been getting my uh, piles of clothes, piles of old things and getting ready to give them to charity um, and throughout this I've redecorated my room, I've got my piles ready so when quarantine is over I can go and give them to the charity shops, obviously cleaned and fresh uh, so no jammies are on them. Um, so yeah that's pretty much what I've been doing. Hello, my name is Mustafa. During the lockdown days, I have learned cooking. Uh, I have helped my shoso, uh, my foster carers in the house, were like washing, cleaning. Uh, I went to exercise. I did my homework. Hi, I'm Akaliva. I'm in my uni halls by myself at the moment, and I'm keeping busy in a few ways. I'm exercising indoors using YouTube exercise clips. I'm also trying to study for exams as well, even though it's hard to stay motivated sometimes, just by taking like regular breaks. Uh, I'm also trying to do lots of things that I enjoy. So I've been reading and painting, and I've been cooking a lot, uh, just like trying new recipes, and I baked a banoffee cake because it was my birthday recently. I've also been watching lots of new shows on Netflix and um, I did some jigsaws as well and I've been practicing my keyboard a lot more so the best way just to stay motivated at a time like this is to make time for the things you really enjoy doing. Love that. Thank you to each and every one of you young people that took the time to send us in a clip. It really is appreciated and I look forward to many more of these Minutes Make Ours with all of you. If you have an idea for a Minutes Makes Ours section, or if you would like to be on that part of the show, please talk to your worker and they will tell you what you need to do to get involved. For now though, it's time to move on to the Let's Meet part of the show. And today we're going to meet three of the Corporate Parenting Board. Very interesting people, and they're gonna tell you more about what their job is and how you can get involved with them to improve the services that we offer. Enjoy. It's now time to meet the Corporate Parenting Board, made up of three county councillors, and they are Councillor Malcolm Wade, representing Dibden and Hythe, Councillor Anne Briggs, representing Waterlooville and Stakes North, and Councillor Fran Carpenter, 
representing Milford-on-Sea and New Milton North. They have worked together for the past two years as part of the Corporate Parenting Board, supporting children in care in Hampshire. If I can begin with you, Fran, you're part of the Corporate Parenting Board. Three very big words. What do they mean? Corporate, first of all, is the County Council. Parenting, well, that's looking after the children who are in Hampshire County Council's care, as if you were their mum or dad, um, and making sure that things are good for them, just like parents uh, should do. And the board, well, that is a panel, a group of people who sit together talking and discussing about how to make things better for the children. So that's what we are. We're a group of people sitting, talking, not always sitting. Sometimes we go out and we talk to the children and go to go and visit residential settings. Um, but we're talking and we're asking questions as if we were the parents of uh, the children. Yeah, so when, when we're having um, discussions on our council committees, which will sound very grand, we can actually use real examples of things that we've seen and heard in the discussions on those council committees. Can I come to you, Malcolm, um, for an example of something that you've learned in the process of, of being a corporate parent? One of the most important things, and one of my colleagues said this only yesterday, they're not a looked after child, they're a human being and they want to be known by their name. And I think that's a really important thing that, that, that was said because it's all about giving them the humanity they deserve. Uh, and I think it's all about humanity, how we should look after them and treat them the very best that we possibly can and help them. Uh, help them because many of them had a very bad start in life for whatever reason. Well, let's try and make the next stage of it a little better so they can go and have a long, productive and positive life. You mentioned a residential home earlier. Can you tell me more about that, Malcolm? A residential home is where a number of children, usually at the moment with the new homes, it seems to be around four or five, are living in care with, with a team of social care social workers working together who are really their more personalised parents uh, looking after them uh, during their stay. Uh, and Hampshire has built a whole uh, number of children's homes and they're, they're really, really, really well put together. They are actually like a home rather than an institution, as some of the older children's homes were. It gives a better environment for the youngsters to go up in. That's great. Thank you, Malcolm. If I can come to you, Anne, please. Why do you think it's important that we have the overview of counsellors, people who are not professionals in children's services? I'm elected by the people of Waterloo Ville and North Stakes and Hampshire as a whole. And it's my duty to make sure that we are doing the best we can because I really do care that I've got four lovely grandchildren who lost their mum and they could have ended up in care. And I think our children in care should have the best positive outlook, but also be happy. They, they shouldn't be disadvantaged because no, it's no child's fault to be in care. So we must do the best we can for them. Thank you for that, Anne. And thank you very much for caring. How can young people get involved in the work that you're doing, Anne? The way you, young people can help us is by telling people if you have a problem, if you think we should be doing something better, but also we'd like to know what we do well, because I know we do lots of good things, but we can always learn. And unless you tell us, and we all love coming to visit you, we've got to know some of you quite well, but the way I feel, every child that is in care, we want them to have a good progression into becoming a care leaver. Please, please talk to us. We'd all love to talk to you. You needn't even tell us who you are, but we'd love to listen to you or to meet you if you want to. So, Anne, how can the young, uh, young people get in touch with you? Well, in the first instance, they can ask their social worker. And I would like to say it doesn't 
have to be just for a problem. We would always just love to talk to you. So please always feel free, but try your social worker first. If not, Maura, the participation officer, and I will give you now my council email address, which I look at about four times a day. So I'm going to spell it out for you. It's A N N dot B R I G G S at Hans dot gov dot UK. And I look forward to hearing from you. Opportunities don't come much better than that. So do get in touch with Anne, either through me, mainly through your social worker. That's the best way of doing it, I would say. Like get in touch, you know, don't be shy. Another way to regularly meet with the Corporate Parenting Board is through the Care Ambassadors Programme. If you're interested in that, drop me a a line on the um, email again, which is participation at hants.gov.uk. Because the care ambassadors meet regularly with the corporate parenting board, so it's a good way of um, of formalising that process. But as Anne said, if you just want to get hold of them directly, far away. And now we come to this final section of the show, where we look at the song produced by some young people earlier this year. It was produced within a context. A project called ICE was set up by some staff from. Hampshire Cams and Hampshire Cultural Trust. As you will hear, this uh, ICE project is a really ambitious one and it offers young people the chance to work with professional artists over a range of different disciplines. It's just fantastic. Um, I'm not going to spend any more time talking about it. I'm going to let you hear Helen from Hampshire Cams and then Alfie from the uh, Rainbow Song to tell you more about it themselves. Here we go. My name's Helen Dive and I'm the lead for innovations and participation for Hampshire CAMS, which is um, Hampshire Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services. And we work with young people in Hampshire up to the age of 18 who are struggling with their mental health. And that might be uh, many different things from um, anxiety, depression and low mood. And what we find is sometimes that young people struggle to maintain their daily life and their routines and being able to function such as going to school or looking after themselves. And that's where CAMS may have a role. My particular role is around uh, supporting young people at an early stage, looking at health promotion and prevention, running various events and projects and trying to do so in a a more inspirational, motivational, kind of creative way. The participation element of uh, my role is around working alongside young people, parents and carers and other professionals in order to develop our service to be even better than we um, currently are working. The ICE project, which stands for Inspire, Create, Exchange, has been a three-year project in collaboration with Hampshire CAMS and the Hampshire Cultural Trust, which is an arts and cultural organisation. We put in uh, an application three years ago to Arts Council England for this three-year project, which was seeking to evidence that using the arts could actually massively impact on young people's psychological and emotional health and well-being. And we were successful in that that grant, and so that's been match-funded um, alongside our own organisation, Sussex Partnership NHS Foundation Trust, for the last three years. And through this project, um, I stands for Inspire, Create, Exchange. The inspiration point is around inspiring young people, so maybe taking them to a gig or a play. And then the create is the 10 weeks working with a professional artist to create uh, works of art, which might be things from photography and filmmaking, animation, textiles, pottery, fashion, songwriting, uh, all kinds of different um, arts. At the end of each year, we have a, a nice celebration event, which is the culmination of the year's work. And we um, put on a number of different performances from dance and um, songwriting and drama pieces to um, having a, a visual exhibition in the foyer and that's a great opportunity to share all the work that young people have done sadly this year 2020 um, our event had to be cancelled due to the covid um, pandemic and so we are really hopeful that we will have an opportunity later this year to reschedule that so that young people have the opportunity to have their day um, and actually have the opportunity to share what they've achieved across the last year Thank you, Helen. That's great. Um, And now, Alfie, tell us your part of the story. 
The ICE project was a project that I was involved in with other children. We set out to write a song. There were six people involved. The age of the other young people uh, were 13 to 16, 17. We did the song with Ellie and Pete from Winnell Rook School, which is based in Winchester. Different people came in, like Hannah, for instance, who was a, a soul singer, and Xavier, who did some photography and pr- promotional art with us. Was the process challenging, Alfie? I've never written as uh, a group before, uh, so it was kind of difficult, but I think it got easier to the end. A key aim of the project was to promote positive mental health. Do you think, did it make any difference to that? I I think it did help a lot, because with things like where I live, we can't really interact, I can't really interact with other children a lot, because we live down the road with uh, not many children sort of my age. So it did affect that. It was nice to actually interact with other children. So was it mainly about being with other children, kind of like an everyday youth club, really? Well, other people my age and other people who've been through experiences that that sort of relate to what I've been through, for instance, my disability. So I think that made it nice and that I could actually relate to people. And relating is a key thing. This project sounds like an adventure. And the best adventures have ups and downs, Alfie. Are you going to tell me that this was all plain sailing? Well, no, we had a few disagreements um, along the way, but we managed to get through that, so... How did, yeah. you, get, how did you get through it, please? We got through it by working out somewhere in the middle. Uh, so if we had a disagreement, one, another of us or one of you would suggest something and... If we didn't agree with that, because usually it took us a couple of times to come up with something and we'd eventually settle on an idea which worked. Did you feel safe in the group, Alfie? I I felt fine. Um, I think it was a nice structure to the group as well. We were able to share a bit of the song today. Alfie, would you like to tell us a, a little bit about it before we play it? The song was called Rainbows. We chose the name because it represented diversity. Everybody is different and we can all get along. Nice one, Alfie. Thank you very much. Let's listen to some of the song. Uh, We've got a short excerpt that we can share with you today. And, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Thank you. I'm red, I'm fire, there's an ember inside I get what I desire, I'm ready to ignite I'm red, I'm fire, there's an ember inside I get what I desire, I'm ready to ignite Orange is my lucky color Makes me feel so safe inside Orange is so beautiful, oh Bring us alive Rainbows are running through my veins 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 A short excerpt indeed from all the young people involved in the Rainbow Song, that is Alfie, Callum, Molly, Ollie, Shakira and Zai. Massive shout out also to Pete and Ellie from Winnell Rock School for helping us shine. And thank you once again to Helen and Amy from both CAMS and Hampshire Cultural Trust for making this whole thing possible. That's it for today. The show is over. It took us a short half hour to listen to you, listen to the corporate parents, and listen to a little bit of a song that is soon to be released in full. I hope you enjoyed it. Contact as ever on participation 
as hants.gov.uk if you've got any ideas for us or you've got anything that you'd like to say or you want to be involved in any way, send that email and you will get through. Take care in these strange, strange days. Thank you for listening. Bye.